Hey everyone, once bitten here with another battle report. So this is game two of Buckeye Battles, and just like in game one, I am facing a Lizardman army. Uh, so again, of course, it's 2400 points, and the scenario for this one is base camp, but um, while you're looking at the board, imagine it's divided in diagonal quadrants, where he, the upper right corner is one, the lower left corner is one, and then of course there's two um, sections in the middle running diagonally. So in this one, the the mission is to get a scoring unit, which means uh, a rank with at least some kind of uh, unit command or a character with it. So you have to get a scoring unit into your opponent's base camp, which in my case is the upper right-hand corner. And I want to keep him out of my lower left-hand corner. And if you do that, uh, you get 250, 250 victory points for being in the corner and another 100 if you're in those central zones. Uh, in addition to the victory points, you get bonus points. Uh, you get two of them. If you have, if you get a, a scoring unit in his uh, deployment zone at any point during the game, uh, plus one if at the end of the game he's not in your corner, and then if you do both those things at the end of the game, you get another plus two. So starting off, uh, this is starting from his from my left facing him, but this unit of salamanders is probably only in the middle of the table. So he's got two salamanders, huge unit of skinks with three coxigores, two units of Saurus warriors. Uh, the one on the right, of course, has two characters. He's got a, a slon that is totally tricked out. Um, the big deal is he can negate sixes, so uh, that really, really hurts your magic phase. He, he can pick anyone within 24 inches, so I, I, I'm trying to keep my wizard 24 inches away from him, but uh, that certainly means that it's going to be very difficult to cast Dwellers Below on the Slans unit because I have to be within 24 inches to cast it. Um, anyway, you can see everything that he has. He's the General and the BSB, and he's got the Standard of Discipline. There's a Scarbet, Scarvet in there on a cold one. And then there's another unit of Salamanders. And he also has three Chameleon Skink units. Yeah, there's the Salamanders. So, I'm deployed like this because I don't want Salam uh, Chameleon Skinks coming after my cannon. And this unit of Demigriffs my idea for them is to just kind of move around the right-hand side slowly and then veer up and get in his scoring unit. Get in his scoring... It's a scoring unit. I want it in his corner to get those all those victory points and the two extra bonus points, possibly four extra bonus points. So um, they can help out in a combat, as, but again, the main deal for them is I, wa I want them to make sure they get in that corner by the end. Uh, spread out my Inner Circle Knights in a straight line. Uh, what I'm trying to do is keep his chameleon skinks from being able to, um, you know, deploy and then scoot between my lines to come shoot at my, my war machines. If you see my hurricanum, uh, it's set up there, so if they come anywhere close, I should be able to, um, you know, if they scoot through there like in a conga line, uh, he should be able to charge them. Anyway, you can see my war machines. Um, there on the left, you can, see, you can see what I have. So uh, he puts two units of chameleon skinks over, as you see him here and one way up there. So I win the, the turn to go first, and um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to, again, move my Demigriffs a little bit. It doesn't look like I move my Demigriffs much, but I want to, again, I don't want his Chameleon Skinks to be able to get out of my my, my uh, charge arc and then be able to attack my cannon. So that's why they're doing that. I have plenty of time. I have six turns to get them up in that corner. I've got my Inner Circle Knights moved up a little bit. My plan is to reform them next turn, and otherwise you can see what I did. There's the right. I mean, chameleon skinks are such a hassle. So now I should just say the reason the pictures are so bad is we are in the corner and there is no light here. And whenever that happens, my pictures turn out like this. And halfway through the game or some point during the game, they turn the lights on and the pictures get a lot better. So anyway, he moves up like you can see. Two chameleon skinks here, um, you can tell they just kind of rotated over. So now the one on the, the far right hand side of this picture is... Um, the one the farthest out. So I feel like I can get my Demigriffs to kind of scoot them over to the middle, which is what I want. Uh, otherwise, he moves up. And over here, he moves like that. Now one thing I just noticed, there's the picture before of where I am and where his Chameleon Skinks are. And that's after. I have no idea how his Chameleon Skinks <laughs> moved up like that. I'm going back. And uh, yeah, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> anyway, uh, close up the Chameleon Skinks over here. And shoots at me, but it, I pass my panic. And we go to Empire turn two. So, uh, again, the Demigriffs, now the Demigriffs charged his skinks that were in the swamp, and he fled. And he's off the picture here, and then he, he doesn't rally next turn. He's off the table. So, 
Um, demographs are doing their job. And again, they're, I'm kind of thinking I want them to swoop around, just kind of keep things contained in the middle of the board and eventually maybe help out against this, this Slons unit. But again, I want them in that far corner. Um, yeah, so some close-ups. Over here, I just turn my pistoliers around to shoot at the Chameleon Skinks. Uh, I tried to charge this unit with my um, with my steam tank, uh, but it ended up like that. So I I used my detachment so that they couldn't charge my, in my halberdiers or my knights or anything like that. They could charge my detachment all they want, and then if they overrun, they're going to hit my steam tank. And I assume they hit me in the front, but we measured it out, and they actually went all said and done because my uh, detachment scrunches together. They actually would overrun. They overrun to my flank. But, as we are now, when I failed the charge, that's okay, because I still have three steam points left. I only charged, I only, um, I only used one die to move forward. Um, so I have a strength four breath weapon to, template to lay down. Uh, charged my hurricanum at the skinks and failed the charge, but I passed my dangerous terrain. So, go to the shooting phase. I unload... Uh, both cannons at the Skink Croxagore unit, and I, each cannon killed a Croxagore, and that was huge. Killed a few Skinks too, but who cares? It killed two Croxagores. And in all honesty, when I did that, it was really because I didn't see any other wonderful targets. Uh, and uh, my opponent told me later that he was cringing because that's exactly the way to handle that unit. So I didn't know that, now I do. Then the Steam Tank laid down its flame template and burned up just a whole slew of Skinks, and the unit on the left is no longer a threat as far as I'm concerned. And then I did cast Dwellers Below on the Source unit on the right. And uh, I was outside of 24 inches as General, which is why I was able to cast it. And um, anyway, I knocked that unit not quite by half, I, by about a third, which is what I should have done. And so that unit now isn't nearly as scary as it used to be. So that was a very good turn for Empire 2. We go to Lizardman turn 2. Chameleon Skinks kind of shimmy between my Hurricanum and my Inner Circle Knights. Salamanders move up to start breathing fire on my Knights. Uh, Skink Croc scores on the left to charge my detachment. And his um, his Saurus blocks either didn't charge or they failed their charges. So, And I honestly don't remember which it was. So here on the left, his uh, Salamanders move to, to sh spit fire at my Halberdiers. And his Coming Skinks are just going to sit there and shoot at my Pistoliers. Uh, they do so... I feel my panic run away, so he's on Snake Eyes. Uh, yeah, Salamanders do what they do best, which is just take a, a ton of Halberdiers out of this unit. Because other things have gone well for me, I think I'm okay. My Demogriffs are full strength, my Knights are doing fine, uh, Steam Tank's there, so I don't need this unit at full strength, but obviously that hurts. And his uh, other Salamanders spit fire at my uh, Inner Circle Knights, kill uh, four of them. Um, which hurts, but I'm still okay with that unit. And let's see, if you look on the left, this picture showing the Skinks Crox Croxagores killed the um, detachment, overran into the flank of my steam tank, uh, which is kind of bad because now my halberdiers can charge them in the flank. Yeah, there's a close-up. And we go to Empire turn three. So I really like how this is shaping up. Uh, Hurricane goes into the, uh, the uh, Salamanders on the right, and there's a the reason I did that, I'll show you in just a minute. So anyway, they charge on the right. My Inner Circle Knights charge the Saurus Warriors. So my only fear there is that those Saurus Warriors stick. I don't need the Sans unit to be able to counter charge on my flank. Now I'm hoping that the Hurricanum will block that. I'll get more to that later. Anyway, Halberdiers go into the flank of the uh, Skink, Skink Croxagores. And the, um, yeah, the Demigriffs just, just reform. I don't know why I reformed instead of moving them up and wheeling, but... Uh, that's what I did. So it looks something like that. There's that charge. There's that charge. And that charge. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm pausing because I'm trying to see what this picture is trying to show. I can't think of what it is. And they turned the lights on, which was awesome. So, after combat, yeah, we killed a ton of skinks in that croc score unit. Uh, I decided not to pursue because I wanted my halberdiers to be able to to help out with this side of the table. I didn't want them bunched up behind my steam tank. Um, but I'm not worried about that. The source unit did indeed hold. Now, I'm really confident I'm going to be able to win that combat in the long run, uh, probably fairly soon because especially I get, uh, if you look at those tokens behind my guys, I get reroll to wound and I'm flaming whatever. That's just, that's a different reason. But anyway, um, 
I, I'm gonna. I, I really am confident I'm gonna win that eventually because he just can't seem to get wounds off on me. Uh, but it's gonna take a minute. So my Hurricanum wins combat, and I reform. I offer my flank, which is something that people hate to see. But I, I don't know why I, I turned this way instead of turning to face the source unit. But basically, I'm reforming so that his source unit definitely cannot wheel past and charge the flank of my knights. Uh, which, in hindsight, shouldn't be that scary because I've got the crown of command, and I'd probably just hold him up and. Uh, could counter charge with my demigriffs and my uh, steam tank, but for some reason I just wasn't thinking about that. Anyway, that's what I did. We go to Lizardman turn three. So uh, overall, it looks like that. He really doesn't have a whole lot going on. He's, you can see he's got a few chameleons on the left who are shooting at my steam tank, but whatever. He's got two salamanders still on the left, which I, I'm now going to be able to start shooting at them with all my war machines, so they're not a threat. Um, and hold on a second. Okay, his. Uh, his hero on the cold one, his Scarvet, charges out of that unit into the flank of my Hurricane, which caused kind of a rules question, because I'm not sure how how that works, but it doesn't matter. It, he, he did that, and then his source unit backed up. And then somebody walks over and says, time's almost up, do not start another round. And I'm like, oh shit, we're only on turn three, and I've already gone. That means I can't do anything the rest of the game, and I was holding back, not grabbing quarters. I was not not pursuing this King Croxagor unit. I was planning on having three more turns left, and now uh, that sucks. So there's the charge of his, his Scarvet and this flank of the Hurricanum, which is fine with me. Hurricanum did his job. Uh, over here on the left, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm trying to show, but the Salamander spit at my cannon, I think, and do enough wounds to kill it, causes a panic test on the, oh, the, the detachment and whatever. Um, the Scarvet beats, does three wounds to her cannon, beats it, does not run it down. Uh, my knights beat up the source, but uh, they were not steadfast anymore, but they still stuck. But that's okay, because that was his turn, it's my turn next. And the game has to end. So here's what I'm looking at. I'm thinking, Halberdiers charge the Scarvet, uh, he takes it, and I eventually beat him through combat res, or he flees, and my demigriffs charge him, and he'll have to flee, and they'd redirect into the Salamander unit, and that would give him an overrun into the into the source unit. If the salamander flees, um, I'm still set up for a nice uh, charge with them. Or if nothing else, I think they can take the charge. Uh, steam tank gets the points on the skin croxagores, and then it's set up to come into the flank of the source uh, slam unit. And the knights, this round of combat, should beat those source warriors, run them down, and then again start picking on the lo the last remaining unit. I really really liked where I was in this game. Uh, so, as it is, I got a draw, and so instead of tw anywhere near 25 points, I got 11 points. And what that means is, as of now, there's no chance I can win the tournament, because there's 106 people in it, 108 people in it, and there's you can't win it w with a draw. So, I was really, really disappointed. It ended up, I, mean, I think, I don't know what took so long. I know that after we finished, we sat around for a long time, so um, I think the call for us to end without starting again was premature because we sat around for at least an extra 45 minutes before other people were finished. And I was, uh, whatever. It was a really fun game. It was a fantastic opponent. Um, I had some good luck when I needed it. And I think it was a strategic victory. But as for the tournament, the, I got, um, yeah, it, it screwed me. <laughs> So anyway, obviously you can tell by my tone, I wasn't happy with, with the way it ended. Um, but nevertheless, that's how it ended. So uh, that was game two. I'm sitting at 34 points. It's respectable. I still have a chance. I'm thinking now maybe hopefully I can still win best Empire General. Um, I doubt if I can t if I can finish in the top few for uh, best overall. But um, yeah, it's still respectable. So at least I haven't had a loss yet. So that's where we're at. We head into game three.